Uh, now we're back to 15,500 raucous fans. We love it when you're at Carver Hawkeye Arena. There's no experience quite like the Iowa Hawkeye wrestling at Carver Hawkeye Arena. So we look forward to you, you being back. It's coming soon. And today, now many of you know our special guest or know about our special guest today and his impressive resume. Uh, but I will give you a little bit. So uh, our Iowa wrestling head coach, Tom Brands, is starting his 17th season leading the Iowa Hawkeyes storied program. In that time, Tom has been recognized as Big Ten Coach of the Year five times and National Coach of the Year three times. As a wrestler, Tom was four-time All-American, three-time national champion as a Hawkeye wrestling for Dan Gable. He earned five World Championship gold medals, and in 1996, Tom won Olympic gold for the United States of America in Atlanta. Uh, as our head coach for the Iowa Hawkeyes, Tom's teams have won four national championships, six Big Ten titles, and we've crowned 13 NCAA individual champions. Tom's teams have shared or won a share of the Big Ten regular season 12 times of his 16 remarkable years as head, head Hawkeye for the wrestling team. And Tom also shares this with uh, this great success, with, with a great staff, great coaches, and yes, that includes his twin brother, Terry. Uh, Coach Tom Brands, welcome today, and thank you for uh, for joining us today. Awesome. Great to be here. Uh, you are the voice of the Hawkeye. Um, that distinct voice that I hear gets me even more excited for what's coming up. Um, you know, people ask a lot of times, is it old hat, what you do every day? You're in the room every day, and, you know, people get excited this time of year, and um, I'll tell you what, it never gets old hat, even in the dog days of summer. So we're fired up that it's close. We're fired up for the fans. There's going to be some news coming out on our season ticket sales again. I believe today um, our fans show up like no other. I'll say it again. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, Coach Brands, we, we couldn't be more excited to have you here. So first things first, uh, anybody who drives by Carver Hawkeye Arena these days sees a big, well, it used to be a hole in the ground. Now it's a structure going up and can see the new wrestling training center well underway. In fact, you mentioned special announcements in November, we're going to the Board of Regents. We're gonna be honoring our, our incredible donors to the program, to the wrestling program and to that building. And we'll be uh, requesting a name for the facility, but uh, maybe you can share a little bit. We're still raising funds. And so maybe you can share a little bit about the project, your take on it and the uh, Carver Circle um, campaign. Yeah, we're raising. We're still raising money. I, I would say, from my chair, we've shifted gears. Um, this has been a labor of love since 2017, 2018, um, and we hit the. We we came out of the gate running hard and fast, and then we finished hard and fast as well. Um, our donors have stepped up. Our fans have stepped up. Um, that's not a surprise. Iowa wrestling has never asked um, our fans to do something of this magnitude. Um, it's not a surprise for me. Um, a lot of people are staggered by the numbers and what we've been able to accomplish on the fundraising side. Um, but we've had great partners. Kevin Collins um, and his team have been awesome. And you know what? When you're, when you're in a battle, I guess you could say like this, um, you do what's necessary. And um, we would drop everything we're doing at moment's notice. Uh, to get out in the road and see great fans for for support and that's how it came to fruition and now you're seeing the walls go up and i'll tell you what uh mccomas hosina um great great choice for the um uh, for the um general contractor they're iowans they're hawkeyes and the people there have been awesome and on top of it as well so um, I don't know about the timeline. You can't control a lot of things, um, but I do know that we will be moving in sometime in the early or late spring, early summer of 2024. Um, and the things going up fast right now. It sure is. Yeah, it's very exciting. And as you know, in my other role with the university, uh, to watch projects go so successfully and, and, and you shout it out to them, and I will as well, our, our general contracting community and in this case, led by McComas, have been great partners on a, on a really important project. For our fans, just to let you know, it is going up, but we're also going to have an elevator shaft that goes down, and we will have a new tunnel 
that will enter onto the floor of Carver Hawkeye Arena from the new training center. So you'll see those Hawkeyes emerge from their dedicated uh, tunnel. It'll be very exciting. And we're really, all of us looking forward to it. Can't wait. So uh, Tom, we know today, we've got a lot of visitors with us today. A lot of them are wrestling fans. And because of that, many of them enjoyed and frankly were inspired by the Big Ten Network documentary film about you and Terry going all the way back to your days in Sheldon. Uh, one thing that made that documentary, I think, unique and special was that it wasn't about one outstanding person. It was about two, two twins. And um, can you talk a little bit about what it has meant to forge and, and, and follow the path that you have uh, with Terry, competing with him and against him since childhood and uh, pushing each other and now sharing in this authorship of a Hawkeye dynasty? Yeah, well, thanks for that. Um, it was, uh, i tell you what, being in the same womb and then all the way to sharing a childhood and then now being on the in the same endeavor and trying to and continuing to conquer uh, the sport of college wrestling and international wrestling. Um, there's a lot of things that go through your head. Number one is we never ever took a back seat to each other uh, growing up. And, and that probably came through pretty strong in that documentary. Um, the other thing is, is when we got to the University of Iowa, um, you know, we had this guy named Dan Gable who wasn't a, he, he was a manager, but he wasn't a micromanager. And he let guys go the direction they needed to go. And with the way our makeup was, there wasn't a lot of um, uh, shying away from things that were painful or hard work. It's not to say that we didn't have um, things to overcome with growing up and maturity and those types of things. But I'll tell you what, this guy named Dan Gable, I mean, we got better in that environment um, very quickly. And we got better and we didn't even know we were getting better. And what that means is, is that we embraced the environment. There was no questioning if we made the right choice or not. Uh, we've always been full steam ahead. And, you know, the things, the stories that you hear about our basement, they're, they're true. Uh, you know, we had a, a basement that had wood paneling, the old style wood paneling that was nailed into the wall on two by fours. And when you're in a small confined area, you're wrestling on a small mat. And, and you get pushed up against the wall, those nails, they work themselves out. And so there were times where you get pushed up against the wall and you get, you get a, a rip or a tear in your, in, your, in, your, in, your, in your backside. And you learn to stay in the center of the map. Um, and, and that seems like harsh and it seems almost abusive and, and almost overboard fanatical. But um, when you talk about all the things that go into that, um, not being... Um, maybe scolded for your independence. Um, it was a recipe to just go out and go conquer what you set out to conquer. And I can't give um, the, the characters in that documentary, you can't give them enough credit. Um, and then Co Coach Gable, I mean, you can never, you, you, you could talk the rest of this show about how great he was and you could never overstate his importance to uh, Terry and I's um, growth. Yeah, it's wonderful. And, and we hear that over and over again about uh, Dan Gable, who, as we know, um, has, has become famous well beyond the University of Iowa, but he brought notoriety and, and a legendary program to this um, campus. And, and you continue that. When you, and, um, when you and Terry made the decision to follow Coach Gable to the University of Iowa from Sheldon, you were ORABs and, and making uh, you know, some notice for yourself when you were there, but then grew here. The, the life of a wrestler on a college campus, especially one led by Dan Gable and one that had the pressure of being the best, a, a team that had the pressure of being the best when you were here, I would imagine that there was little spare time when you put into or take into account practicing, competing, studying as a student athlete. Um, do you recall your um, uh, college life, apart from those elements, college life in Iowa City, were there times for you to 
get out and about in Iowa City, any favorite hangouts, those kinds of places. We, we all, many of us, went to the University of Iowa and remember those days. But wrestlers, sometimes you're different. You're, you're taking it to a level where you don't even know what's outside. You're at the wrestling mat. Uh, yeah, I mean, you enjoy the goods of college life. That was number three on Gable's priority list. Yeah. You know, when you look up the definition for priority, priority is one thing. And so what, what Terry and I, what we would talk about is, okay, priority is one thing. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this tight little circle. And so it can be win World Olympic and National Championships. It can be to have a strong faith. Family's important. And then you're, you know, you're, um, you're enjoying the goods of college life is also in that tight circle. It just, the circle can't be this big. The circle's only this big. So it's one thing, that priority. And we certainly enjoyed um, the goods of college life um, in moderation. And sometimes you got to knot in your head and learn the, the, the hard lessons of life. But, you know, you asked about a favorite spot. And, you know, the McDougal family, um, they, were, they had a place called R.T. Grunts. And it was off the downtown area. Um, um, and we probably frequented that place, uh, more than any other RT grunt. So if you're looking for like, a, it's not here anymore. Yeah. Um, but if you're looking for like, um, you know, maybe just, maybe, maybe just shout out the place. McDougal. Your go-to. Yeah. It was, uh, as I recall, there were a lot of bikes outside of, outside of RT grunts. So. Yeah. They, Friday afternoon, they would cook steaks and you'd go down yeah. there and, you know, it was, it was awesome. And, um, the McDougals were wrestling fans and, you know, intense legal pain shirt, um, came out of RT Grunts. And, you know, if you, if you know RT Grunts, it was, it was Romeo Tango, RT's report for that. So a lot of good memories there. You asking that question. Wonderful. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad they were good, that there were memories there. <laughs> um, Coach, obviously your success at the University of Iowa as a wrestler is well documented. Curious, in the time that you were with the Hawkeyes, is there a, is there a particular Iowa Hawkeye wrestling moment that stands out uh, in your memory? My total experience was about really in a really succinct, fanatical way was to conquer the world of wrestling. Um, it's hard to pick one moment. Uh, I think what happens is, is you're so driven that the next event is the most important event, regardless of who the opponent is. Um, this is a sport where there's a thing called a, a fall, a pinfall, and you can be winning in a lopsided match and you go to sleep and, and you can find yourself um, on the wrong end of getting the mat slapped and it's over. Um, and so the, 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 the concentration and the focus um, the fanatical side of being a competitor um, to absolutely go out and dominate. And you just, there's never, ever a let up. Um, and so that's what I remember. That, that's how I would answer that question. Um, and you know what? Gable was, he was all about that. Uh, and, you know, a lot of, of the naysayers would say that we took that over the line. And, um, you know, there were times where we had private conversations with our coaches or whatever. Um, but Barry Davis was a, was a mentor. Royce Alger, one of the most ferocious competitors this program seen, was a mentor. Mark Johnson, Jimmy Zaleski was an assistant here. Um, they, they never tried to um, temper us. It was like, you know what, if you carry it over the line, we, we got to be careful there because now, you know, you could have the things that you're after taken away from you if you take it over the line. Um, but they were always about that intensity or whatever term you name you want to give it so long answer there um i remember um it was either a quarter probably a quarterfinal match when the nationals were here in 1991 i was a junior i had wrestled and so i was i went back to the hotel um to eat rest get ready for the semifinal round and i remember listening to the radio um of the matches coming up and Travis Pfizer was 190 pounder and he had a match with a, a guy from Arizona state and he had a big upset. And that actually might've been a second round match. And I remember on the radio, listening to that crowd and you couldn't hear the announcer talking through the headset on the radio in the broadcast. That's how loud that crowd was. 
um, in that upset. So there's a shout out to a classmate and a teammate, Travis Pfizer. Um, that's probably a memory that just comes to mind just because it's a tribute to the fans. And you, and you weren't even in the arena. I think it's also a tribute to those crazy Hawkeye fans we have. I recall that loudness when we took down Penn State most recently uh, in Carver Hawkeye Arena. And when Kemmerer won his match, um, it, it didn't sound normal to me. It sounded too loud to be normal. So um, it's remarkable. Abe Assad was a true freshman. was at 184, so he was the next man. I remember his eyes he started to look like, you know, and, you know, that rabbit's getting hunted look. And so, you know, you're the freaking wolf, man. And so we pulled him back into the um, back into the training room back there in the tunnel and again, got him out of that crowd. And it was deafening back there behind those doors. So, you know, winning in 2021 was a big deal. I remember getting off the bus um, and I had my mask on um, because we had to, I mean, the silliest damn thing in the world, but uh, I shouldn't say that, sorry. Um, but um, I remember we'll, I we'll, off, we'll edit that out in post production, I'm sure. But um, you know, we got off the bus, and and Mackie Gable, Gable's fourth fourth daughter, um, handed me the phone, and Gable was on Facetime with her, and he grabs it, and I, I looked at the phone, and he goes, "Tommy, I just got to say thank you." And I go, "Gable, I'm wearing a mask. How can you tell us apart? How can you tell us apart?" He goes, "Oh, I can tell you apart. I can tell you. I can tell you." <laughs> So that was a memory. Um, anyway, a lot of good memories. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Yeah, and one more plug to our fans and get ready and everyone get get to that arena this year because they are memorable experiences. You know, you mentioned at the beginning of your response to that question, uh, Tom, this notion of international wrestling. And like many of our Olympic sports, um, the international competition and season, if you will, it can be as important as the NCAA season. You you. As I said in the introduction, you have multiple world championships, uh, and then you topped it off in 96 with the gold medal in Atlanta. What, was, that, was that a tournament that was like others, or how was it different to go and wrestle for the United States against th those guys from Russia and Turkey and other places on such a big stage? How was it different? Uh, it's, it's not different because wrestling is so important at the University of Iowa. You know, there's wrestling and there's writing and football pay, pays the bills. And you know what? That's about it. No, I'm not. I, I'm, I'm not. That's, that's a little bit disparaging to other um, um, endeavors. But you know what? That's, that's what it's like. Wrestling is so important at the University of Iowa that when you go to other places around the world where it's important or you're in Atlanta, Georgia, and there's 8,000 sold out no. um, in a big crowd. And it's a very important tournament for all the stakes. Um, it's really no different than mm -hmm. any other event that you're getting ready for. You peak for it, you train for it, and you go out, you perform, and, um, you, you know, you don't ever think about the alternative. Your intentions are to win. And so it's, it's, it, it is a big deal, um, but it's more of a big deal afterwards because of the satisfaction. I mean, it's an incredibly satisfying feeling um, to conquer the world in wrestling, um, but there were steps that you took. I won a state championship as a junior in high school. That was a big deal. That was a big step. I, I won my, you know, my first national championship as a sophomore at the University of Iowa. That was a big deal. And it wasn't like I was okay with being fourth in the country the year before. It, I wasn't. And maybe that was the difference. And, and so you, that pursuit was so red hot and steady and consistent um that you just you weren't going to be denied even when you look at your career and you were denied because you know you look at you know john smith's career and now jordan burroughs becoming the most credentialed men's freestyle wrestler ever just this year winning his world title again um you know those are the two names that are synonymous with greatness and you know i i don't even scratch and i'm not even close to scratching their results so um it, it, i tell you what wrestling teaches you to be humble um, also, and then that's what you take away from it most in your coaching. And then you get a guy like Spencer Lee, who is freaking awesome in every aspect. He's humble. He's driven. He handles adversity. Um, he's really, really, a um, a killer in disguise on the mat. And that's a, that's a compliment. Um, you know, he's just got this thing built inside of him where the best of him shows up. 
um, when he steps on the mat. And, um, you know, that's just a great tribute to this program again. And he's going for history this year. And the reason why he's going for history this year is because he kept everything in perspective every step of the way. And when he won his first title, it never was about four. Um, and he coined the phrase, he said it himself best. Um, it was about um, the next one. It was never about four. And then he won two, and then it was about the next one. And then he won three, and now it's about the next one. So here we are in uh, 2022 and 2023. Yeah, exciting. And, and as you can imagine, we, we haven't gotten to the... Uh to the visitors questions yet, but they're coming in and, and, and as you might imagine, some of them are about Spencer. Uh, we'll talk more about Spencer later. You know, coach, you, you mentioned the Olympics and of course your brother uh, fought back as we all saw in the documentary, fought back, went to the Olympics and won a medal himself. Um, so to go from that ultimate stage to something I, I want to have everybody here remember, have you remember for them. Uh, the first time I really got a chance to meet and know you and Terry, and ultimately become your PA announcer was when I announced a very unique and entertaining duel in the pool at the Campus Recreation and Wellness Center during our Iowa, Iowa State Hawkeye swim meet. And can you tell our visitors just a little bit about that brother versus brother race the two of you had? Well, Terry's the, the winner of the race, even though I won the race. Um, in swimming, you can't twitch a hair. It's true. Uh, on a start or, or you're, you're disqualified. Um, I don't even think there's a thing as a, as a false start and maybe track is the other way. Maybe I got it wrong. Maybe you can have a false start swimming and then you get back up on the blocks, but whatever. And so Terry was leaning, and lean and lean and anticipating the whistle start. And I, I was like, Hey, that's a false start. He takes off and he's going and I'm just sitting there. I'm just like this. And so he, he, you know, took off and expended all that energy down and back and he gets back out of the pool and I said that was a false start he gets back up okay well here we go again and then I he was tuckered out you don't want to ever admit that ever ever but and he didn't admit it he jumped right up on the block and got ready to swim again after finishing 50 yards all alone and I ended up winning the race um but when we timed because it was on film when we timed his first lap um he had a better time so he he gets a championship and I'll tell you what, that's not because I'm a good sport and passive press to, to give him credit. That's because if you get beat, you get beat, you admit it. And, and then you go to work on your deficiencies and you never let it happen again. So I guarantee you that if we uh, put those tight, freaking <laughs> little tight sports on again and, and uh, he wouldn't fall start and I, I, would, I would take him down. All right. Wonderful. Well, that's an invitation. We'll work on that. I think one of the reasons I bring it up is it, it also displays the generosity you and Terry have for helping those beyond the wrestling team. Um, you gave your time and, as you pointed out, maybe a bit of your reputation in, in bringing additional attention to another Iowa Olympic sport in, in swimming. And I can vouch it was absolutely sold out in the um, in, in, in the Campus Recreation and Wellness Center that night. And, and I'll also say that you're, you don't just shine on the athletic department. Uh, you may not even recall this, maybe you probably do, uh, but you caught a lot of attention. And I will say a lot of gratitude when you included in a post-match interview that one of your favorite organizations is the student University of Iowa student-run CAMBUS system. Uh, your comment came out of left field, but I can tell you CAMBUS leadership couldn't stop talking about it for months. And it happens this week during homecoming week. This is the 50th anniversary of CAM bus on the University of Iowa campus as the longest free public bus system for a university in the country. So uh, your comments even there were very appreciated. Yeah, you keep shouting out. I mean, this is a great place. And, you know, I see your door and you're in your office and I know that you're in, you know, in, um, you know, what's helped me out. What's the hall? Yes, Paul. You're yeah. a and, you know, I got to visit um, the interim president, Keller, when he took over, when Harold left. Harold was a big part of our fundraising for our facility. And then, you know, Keller actually made the announcement. And then and then Barb Wilson puts the final icing on the cake. But really, you, with all the effort and all the campus people over there, um, awesome. I mean, the leadership's awesome. Uh, Spencer Lee and I got invited to sit with um, John Keller. Um, and it was the highlight of his presidency. Let me tell you that. Yeah, we were sitting in there and these two little guys walk in and 
I'm not sure that we were recognized by the 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 the, the gatekeeper there, and so it was kind of like. And then when you came you came out of your office, you're like, hey, Brands and Lee, and I'm like, Leonard, what the hell's going on? And and then uh, all of a sudden it was a party, and we were offered water, and Fine. <laughs> yes, finally gave you some water. <laughs> well, I know I know that our uh, former interim president John Keller is on today, so a shout out to John and. Uh, you have no bigger wrestling fan than John. He just can't wait for this season to get started like so many others. And by the way, one other thing you've actually added to the pomp and circumstance of Iowa wrestling, as we've done with football, and another shout out you've made is you've really shared your public appreciation for our live Hawks and the uh, Iowa Raptor Project at the McBride Nature Center. We now have those great handlers bring our live Hawks like Hercules to Carver Hawkeye Arena for your meets and um, talk talk to me why why do those hawks grab you so much? Well, they're they're born and bred to hunt, and when you can um, see that firsthand, um, there's an intensity there that is respected. Uh, nature is fierce, um, and it's it's not fair. And it's it, for me. It's something that I I I gravitate towards. So uh, I love it. Yeah, I love it. It's fun. It's fun, it's you know, fun to see. To throw a shout out is, you know, the the marching band. I mean, I I, I love marching bands. I mean, um, I mean the marching band. I, I you like I've been introduced at football games, you know, a couple times here and there. And when you walk through that bottom, when you're getting down through in the in in uh, you know the the, um, the dark deep tunnels at Kinnick Stadium, and you're going onto the field, and you walk by the band when they're congregating there. They are they they got the most energy. They're the least shy, and they're I tell you what, you talk about all Hawkeye all the time. Um, that marching band is is freaking awesome in Kinnick Stadium. Yeah, and we hope people will join in and um, join the thousands that will be at this Friday's homecoming parade when both the Iowa Marching Band as well as the Alumni Marching Band will be uh, on Iowa City streets uh, celebrating the Hawkeyes. Um, it, interestingly enough, there are a lot of overlaps between the CAM bus team and the Hawkeye Marching Band team. And they're also, I think, rumors are they're the, the biggest partiers on campus. So fun group, and they work hard, and they make a huge difference to the University of Iowa. Uh, you know, Coach, um, we talk about wrestling and you talk about wrestling as this uh, in individual effort uh, and, and sport. But to reach national success, uh, both on the mat and, and beyond the mat, you, you it takes a team. And maybe you can take just a moment to share a word about your dedicated staff, your coaching staff and those who keep you grounded and supported. Yeah, I got you mentioned Terry, and then we got a great um, two other coaches by the NCA rules. That's what we can have. Um, Bobby Telford and Ryan Morningstar. Ryan Morningstar is our chief recruiter. Um, does a great job. Um, can't say enough about those two. Strength coach Alex Harmer, Mariah Marinelli is our director of ops. Um, she really runs the show. Um, very organized. Very ahead of the game when it comes to. Um, organizing our trips and being on top of it. So when problems come up, we're already ahead of it. Um, you, you know, you can't you can't say enough. You know, we have another entity um, that has to be separate from our program, but the Hawkeye Wrestling Club is huge for us, um, our postgraduate club. Um, you know, we have a guy, Pat Lugo, in that club that's still competing, and he was a Big Ten champion, and then they canceled the Nationals because of the COVID, and he was the one that up in the outside with no with no um no reconciliation i mean it was, that was just it his, his, his career was over and um so it gives him an opportunity to stick around here and continue to compete and do what he wants to do in the sport of wrestling so it's deep it's deep and then you have family and you know you never give your your uh, spouse's um enough credit and you gotta Shout out to jenny for sure for sure invested and I mean like no other yes absolutely and I, I hear Terry say the same thing about Michelle uh, it's it's important and it's part of it is because of the life of a wrestling coach you you have odd hours lots of travel many obligations like this and many others how do you how do you find downtime how do you find time for you or do you 
And um, how do you maintain your health and fitness? I started to figure out this year, and I've said it a couple of times, and a couple of people have heard it a couple of different times, so it may be old hat to some, but I think probably the worst thing, the worst thing that a coach can do is try to convince everybody how busy they are. Um, they're locked down and oh my goodness, they don't, they put in 16, 18 hour days. And yeah, I mean, we work hard. And, and the thing is, is we're ready to go at moment's notice. If we got to go see a recruit, um, you know, we'll get on a plane. And if we can't find a donor to give us a ride, then we'll, we'll, we'll fly commercial. Um, that happens more than you think flying commercial. Um, and we'll go do what we got to do. But um, there's a lot of hours in the day. Um, but really you're on call all the time and you wouldn't want it any other way. And to, to coach hands off, I don't even know what that means. Um, I know that hobbies are important and a well-balanced life is important, um, but it goes back to that little circle. And there's just not a lot that can invade that circle. And, you know, that's a good message for anybody that wants to, wants to be the best. That doesn't mean that you sacrifice your family or your faith or your, the things that are most important to you. What that means is they all have to be inclusive in that. And, but you just, you can't bring in too much from the outside because that's where you get the distraction. So you ask what I like to do. I, I mean, I, I like the outdoors. I like to, I like to um, be outdoors and I'm an adventurous type of guy, but um, man, we're in here a lot. Yeah. So you what else I like I, I freaking like the wrestling room that's what I like and uh you know Gable used to talk about like that he had to get his fix every day and that was watching wrestling or, or being in that environment and I, I know now getting older what he means and there's nothing better than great wrestling I mean watching the world championships this year the United States won that team title um you know we had a lot we had a medal hall and that, that was some great wrestling and some great United States performances. And there's nothing better there. And you saw Jordan Burroughs, you know, make history. And I'm talking about big history. When you supplant a guy named John Smith um, with your accolades, that's big history. And, you know, we had a Hawkeye that won a silver and he's a world champion in Olympic bronze. And then another world silver, Thomas Gilman. Um, he won his fourth world Olympic medal and he's a Hawkeye. So, you know, there's a lot there. Bill Zaddix, a Hawkeye alum, was a national champion here. And, you know, he's the men's head freestyle coach at USA Wrestling. And so it's deep. It's deep, everybody. It's deep. Wonderful. Tom, I'm going to get to some of our, um, some of our visitors' questions. But one, one uh, that I hope is something that can mean something to those who uh, are visiting today um, we all admire your success and how you've maintained it over the years consistently. Um, and many of those who are on this visit today are, are trying to do their best at their job, with their family, um, or teams they may compete with or maybe coach. Uh, can you share maybe a piece of advice, a trade or a daily practice that you might suggest could help somebody to, to um make the most of their drive in any levels of those kinds of uh, endeavors for success? I think that being decent is probably the way you're going to solve a lot of problems. And in 2021, 22, as the world is changing fast, um, being decent is really, really important. And it, when, you're, when you're decent, you stop, you slow down a little bit. I think you can solve some more problems that way. Um, doesn't mean you're less driven. Doesn't mean that you're less fanatical. Doesn't mean that you're less intense. It just means that you're a freaking decent guy at the end of the day. And that when you drive home, and what I do is, is um, you know, I got this roster and it's in my vehicle. And when I drive home, that's the first thing I pick up. And I look at all the names. If there's anybody where if the sun goes down and you, you there's a little, maybe just a misunderstanding or even it could be maybe even more like into the, where there's a misunderstanding into bad blood, you, you make it right. And, you know, that's been a practice of mine and Terry's um, since we started coaching um, where you, you're looking at your roster and you're taking care of the things that need to be taken care of. So just, just be, be a decent, decent person. Wonderful. 
Yeah, it's a, a good piece of advice on the matter beyond it. Uh, Coach, let's take a couple of the uh, uh, questions or a few of the questions that have come in. Uh, this is an interesting one. It's first in, so I'm going to grab it. Um, it talks about the pipeline of success and what we've got at Iowa and that we do have a lot of our recruits coming from places like um, Ohio and Pennsylvania, certainly. Um, and, and I think the question is somewhat asking about what, what about Iowa and, and how do we get the pipeline of success in Iowa either reestablished or keep it? I think we've got a lot of talent in Iowa, but maybe you can speak about um, how we as coaches develop that in environment within the high school classes to, to bring people here and, and in wrestling. Well, first of all, you're recruiting the best wrestlers in the country. So wherever those wrestlers come from, um, that's what you're doing. And if they come from Iowa, you're, you've got to get your in-state talent for sure. Keep it. Um, but we want the best wrestlers that are geared toward winning World Olympic and National Championships. Um, we, we do have Iowa um, flavor in our, in our roster. And, um, you know, for me, Spencer Lee's in Iowa. Um, we talk about that forever when you move here. This is your home. You're not supplanting your parents and where you grew up and all that, but this is your home. Um, so, you know, Iowans can be proud of Spencer Lee. Um, and then the other thing is, is his dad moved here and worked at Coe College for yep. six years. So that's that's probably how I would yeah. answer. We yeah. we do not forsake, um, you know, our our brethren, yeah. Iowa, or the wrestling. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I see uh, an interesting question from your past. This is uh, David Goldstein wrote this one. When you wrestled Dan Gable in preparation for upcoming matches, who usually won that preparation match? I wrestled Dan Gable live one time. Um, he obviously instructed me a lot. Um, and and I came in to a workout situation and looked around the room and there was only one guy available. And he just said, you go down, I'm jump on top. And he was going to work into it. And I, I did not see the light of day. Uh, <laughs> wrestling, you know, an escape um, is maybe sometimes a whatever point that you take for granted. I just don't like to work hard on top. Let me tell you about Dan Gable. He works hard on top and he will punish you on top. And the, the, when I tell the story, I say that I couldn't even wiggle my pinky. Now, that's not true. He didn't have everything locked out, but. Um, I was like, you know, like this a lot, where a lot was locked out. And, you know, my joints were never the same. <laughs> well, as we know, uh, Dan uh, is still tough. And uh, you might recall when he was with President Trump getting his medal, uh, Donald Trump mentioned, you know, I'm a lot bigger than you. Do you think I'd have a chance with you on the mat? And it was a very quick response, which was you'd have no chance. So, um, uh, yeah, he's something else. And in fact, to that point, Mark Clauser asked a question to see if this uh, legend is true for you. He said, um, uh, Coach, Coach Gable stopped the bus heading back from the ISU match and uh, told you and Terry to work out your differences in the ditch. Is that true? We'll let the legend replace yeah. the fact. All right. That sounds perfect. I, 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 though, we, we were going to Notre Dame in a snowstorm um, in 90 or 91, and we got exiting the interstate we got caught on an up ramp and the bus couldn't make it so gable opened the door and said get out and push him up the hill and 15 guys got out and the coaches and we pushed that bus right up the hill and went on our merry way and ended yeah. up in counts notre dame every, every, every moment's a workout uh opportunity i recall not to go back to another university time with me, but when we were recovering from the flood and everybody was sandbagging, I've shared this with you or, or made you remember it. Uh, there was a sand, there was a sand hill that had the Hawkeye uh, football team on it, one that had the women's uh, uh, basketball team, and there was one that had your wrestlers and you on it. And the Red Cross came and said, we have food for all of the volunteers. And of course, when I went to the football team, they beat everybody to the bus. Uh, and when I went to you, you looked up and said, this is a workout for us. We're not eating. 
and you guys just kept going. So yeah, it doesn't matter what it is. It looks like it's an excuse for a way to work out for the Iowa wrestling team. Go hard till the job's done. How's that? Absolutely. And you did. Uh, it, uh, here's one from our friend Chuck Yagla. We already talked about it. Uh, uh, the loudest experience at Carver Hawkeye Arena as a competitor and a coach. I think you just gave those examples. But I will say that I would imagine that one of the loudest moments at the field house was probably when Chuck Yagla was on the mat. Chuck Yagla, two-time champ, 80 Olympic team, um, good friend of mine, huge alum, and he volunteers um, tirelessly for our alum activities. Like, we're going to honor the, I don't know if I can announce it or not, but we're going to honor the 83 team, hopefully, here for that Oklahoma State meet, and um, that was a dominant team, the 83 team, and, you know, Chuck Yagla was an assistant for Gable um, after he graduated for a for a couple of years. So, you know, a lot of respect for, for uh, the name Yegla as well. Absolutely. And still a great friend of the program. Um, this is one, maybe it's a parenting question, but it's one that comes in thinking probably about kids that are competing. Can you share any basic ideas about how to grow a more aggressive style in a kid who may not be naturally aggressive? And maybe there's a dangerous place we need to be careful of in that, but it's an interesting question, especially with very young wrestling kids yeah a lot of ways to win in wrestling so what's aggressive to one person um, may not be aggressive to another but really the bottom line is is are you wrestling with energy are you wrestling to score points are you working hard out there the entire time do you train in such a way that your opponent can't answer the bell after a certain amount of time and if he does um you're still going to prevail and when you train and you compete that way, I think all of those um, little whatever concerns work themselves out. When you're hesitant or you hold back or you let up, that's when, you know, things get boring or you get vulnerable or whatever. And um, just being like being the guy that's doing the throttling. And then there's a lot of ways to throttle somebody. You know, you don't just have to be the, the hammer. You know, you can be flexible and throttle somebody. You can be fast and throttle somebody. So you just, you got to be, you got to be, you got to be really smart. You got to be tough. Yeah, great. Um, Doug Kalash, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Wanted to give a thank out for you. Thank you for your shout out to the, to the band. Uh, and he did ask about whether or not or why we don't have the pep band at the home matches. I don't think you and I determined that, but maybe we'll make that request. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm going to. Get rid of this phone call. So, okay, it would appear to me that Tom got rid of the phone call and got rid of us at the same time. Um, Tony, you're the director, but I know we also have James. Maybe you can go and uh, retrieve coach and bring him back. Um, one one thing I will say, we're getting a lot of great questions. Thank you for the questions. I can't get to all of them, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're there. You're oh, good. Man. Tom, Tom's back on the mat. That. Hey, sorry, man. Woo. No problem. No problem. Hey, I never sweat so hard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, you're perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so um, I don't know if we, you know, here, here, it, here's the thing. Yeah. Um, I knew when I gave a shout out to the marching band that I'm like, as I'm saying, I'm going, oh, we're gonna step into the pep band thing. But the bottom line is, is I'm not against any and especially live music. Can you still hear me? You bet. Absolutely. Okay. My phone's ringing again. But anyway, so my point is, is that I'm all about the band. Um, it's just when there's a band and there's live music and there's, like, when there's only so much time in between matches and you got the Big Ten Network that televises basically everything um, nowadays. Um, it's just, it's, it's, it's just maybe too much of a, three ring circus i'm not against it yep. i'm not against it so whatever awesome the key, the key is wrestling right uh, so let's let's uh finish this up with a couple of questions that come from um or about the wrestling facility and by the way uh mia thanks for the shout out she mia uh runs our cam bus system so she's online and, and wants to give you a thank you tom um on on the facility, we we are a question came up about the facility, um, and I'm going to find it here in a minute. It it was uh, regarding how 
the wrestling facility is going to work with uh, USA Wrestling in terms of training and offices. And I'd also ask, I know we've designed this to also incorporate our new uh, 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 women's wrestling program. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, USA Wrestling, um, you know, that doesn't factor in. Um, we have an RTC, which is a regional training center, which is a Hawkeye Wrestling Club. And we actually, you know, that's how we keep our postgraduates um, in our program. Um, Spencer Lee will be a member of the Hawkeye Wrestling Club. Um, Jacob Warner, when he graduates next year, will be a member of the Hawkeye Wrestling Club. Max Murin will have an opportunity to wrestle in our Hawkeye Wrestling Club when they all graduate next year. Just like Marinelli Young and Austin DeSanto and Ironman were this year. They're all in our Hawkeye Wrestling Club. So um, really, the Regional Training Center is an NGB, a national governing body, USA Wrestling um, entity, and that's about as far as it goes with USA Wrestling. Wonderful, and and kind of combining a couple of questions from Steve and Josie, and combined and and adding on to that, how will the facility, the new facility that we're building, and and still raising funds for, elevate the uh, Iowa Hawkeye Wrestling program? Well, first of all, you need to know that you have to keep up with current. And what happened was, is in the middle, like 2015-ish, um, we started to become outdated. It's clean. We take doggone good care of our existing facility. We had a remodel in 2011. It was basically a, a facelift, and we were, we were gracious for that. Um, our administra administration stepped up for that. But um, we kept getting farther and farther behind, and it was time. And how it makes us better is um just like the facility you see at football it's something that is for um cutting edge um it's something that you remember um and gable talked about this a little bit he, he uh, his quote was me and the brands is could wrestle in a dungeon and it didn't matter mm -hmm. that's not you can speak for me and the brands is uh, but i know that young people want the best and they want the best in everything. And we were the best in the facility for a long, long time. And that, you know, our facility opened in the early eighties and it's time. And so now we're going to have the best facility in the world. Um, the way this one's designed, it doesn't have bunks. It doesn't have a kitchen um, like other places in, in Russia and Iran do, but um, without the, bunks without the kitchen this will be the finest training facility on the planet absolutely coach we've reached the end of our time for those who have visited and had questions i didn't get to i'm sorry we did get a lot of questions and uh i apologize for not getting to every one of them but um uh, tom it's been a pleasure uh visiting with you today i just really uh can't wait for this season to get going and for those who are curious and don't already know, uh, and as you said, we're going to have announcements coming up regarding our attendance, but um, Martin, November 13th, we started off with Cal Baptist, and then um, off we go on, on, on this, uh, this version of the Iowa Hawkeyes championship team. We just really can't wait. We hope to see all of you at, uh, at Carver Hawkeye Arena this, the later this fall and, and through the winter.